Good day students and welcome to the number 11 on our study of proof by mathematical induction. Remember that the live collection of clips can be found on math.serve.com. On the pre-calc you will gain access um, to the remainder of our um, re review tutorials on mathematical induction. So before we get started with our question 11, let's go ahead and do a real quick um, review of our plan of attack. So let's go ahead and write this down. All right, so this is our plan. Let's write this in blue. So um, proof by mathematical induction can be broken down into three parts. First part is the base case. So for the base case, um, you want to show that um, the statement is true for the um, smallest condition in the set of um, acceptable integers. Okay, so show that let's say n equals 1 is true, but in the case of um, positive integers, or also known as rational numbers, so show that n equals 1 is true. And then uh, the next part is the inductive hypothesis. Inductive hypothesis. In this case, you're going to be making an assumption that the statement is true for a particular um, integer in the set of all natural numbers. So for inductive hypothesis, we're going to show, no, we're going to make an assumption. We're going to assume, um, assume that, assume that n equals k is true for some k instead of um, natural numbers. And then lastly, the last part, part three, is the inductive step. All right, this is normally the hard part in the whole uh, mathematical induction proof process. So inductive step, you want to sh um, show that, show that um, n equals k is true by assumption follows that n equals the next step, k plus 1, is also true. All right, so these are the three parts of the, our proof by mathematical induction. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, the problem, question 11. Uh, prove that um, the discrete sum from k equals 1 to n of k is equal to one half of n times n plus one for all positive integers n. All right, so this is our task. Let's go ahead and start with the proof. We're going to start with the base case. So base case, um, from our plan right here, we know what that involves. We want to show show that n equals 1 is true. All right, so um, this is a discrete sum. If you think about what this is, you just add in um, k, where k attains a value from 1 all the way to n, and just add all those values together. So for k equals 1, I mean, for n equals 1, just simply means that um, k is going to assume a value of 1. We're going from 1 to 1. So on the left side, we're going to have 1. The question is, is 1 equal to 1 half of, now plug in 1 on the right side, of 1 times 1 plus 1, as the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. So is 1 equal to, if you simplify this, 1 half times 1 times 2, 2. Is 1 equal to 1? The answer is yes. So our base case for the foundation holds. So that's good. Now uh, let's move on to the second part of our proof, our inductive, um, inductive hypothesis. So for the inductive hypothesis, we're going to be making an assumption. Um, I normally said n equals k, but k is already being implemented here in this equation, so I'm going to use another variable. All right, so for inductive hypothesis, we're going to assume, assume that um, n equals, how about we use um, m? n equals m is true. All right, so how do we make that assumption? How do we express that? 
So this is how you do it. We're going to assume that the discrete sum from k equals 1 to m. Notice it's not n, it's m because n is equal to m right now, okay? From k equals 1 to m of k is equal to 1 half. Now instead of n times n plus 1, it's going to be m times m plus 1. And this is for sum m in uh, the set of positive integers, in the set of positive integers or natural numbers, okay, positive integers. So we're now making the assumption that some arbitrary m of this statement holds true, okay? Now the next part is the inductive step. Can we show that the next step, the next integer value after m holds true using this assumption that m is true. So inductive step, what do we want to show here for the inductive step? We want to show that um, n equals m is true, follows that the next step, n equals m plus 1, is also true. It's also true. All right? So let's go ahead and uh, carry out that um, proof. So let's see. We're not going to start with the next step here. So we're going to be looking at the discrete sum from k equals 1 to m plus 1 of k. Now, what is this sigma notation? What on earth does it mean? Let me write it out in expanded form so that we can really understand what's going on here. So if I write down this um, sigma notation in expanded form, it's basically going to be what you get when you input the values of k. So k has values from 1, 2, 3, all the way down to m plus 1. Let's say comma m and then m plus 1. So all these values get inputted into this, the argument of our um, discrete sum. Okay, so if we plug all these values in there, we're going to have the sum <clears throat> from k equals 1 to m plus 1. This is just scratch work. I just want to show you what this means, all right? So it becomes, plug in the first one, 1 plus the second one, 2 plus, all these values are just going into k, okay? 3 plus dot 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 plus m plus m plus 1. So that's what this expression here means, all right? So I want to um, incorporate this piece into this problem. So all I just simply do is express the sum from 1 to m in a condensed fashion using the discrete sum notation, all right? So if I go ahead and do that, this is going to become the discrete sum from k equals 1 all the way to m of k plus the next term is what? m plus 1. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and erase my scratch work. Now that I've written it in um, a form that involves the previous statement of our inductive hypothesis, we can now make a substitution. Based on our assumption, what is this piece equal to? It is equal to 1 half m times m plus 1. Okay, so this is going to be equal to is going to be equal to, um, let's see, equal to 1 half m times m plus 1 plus the last term, m plus 1. Okay? Now what I want to do is I want to factor out 1 half m plus 1 from both sides. I can multiply this side by 2 over 2. The same denominator as 1 half so that it's easy for me to factor out 1 half. 2 over 2 is 1, so I didn't make any change to this expression right here. All right, so let's go ahead and factor out 1 half m plus 1. So if I factor out 1 half and m plus 1, I'll be left with, um, let's see, what would I be left with? I'll be left with m and just this numerator here too, okay? So I'll be left with um, m plus 2. All right, let's rewrite this further. This can be written as 1 half times m plus 1 times m plus 1 plus 1. This is exactly what we want. Why? Because if you look at the previous 
expression in an adaptive hypothesis, by advancing to m plus 1, what happened to the m's? This m advanced to m plus 1, and this m advanced to m plus 1 also. So this clearly shows that um, uh, the next statement is also true. So we have the summation from k equals 1 to m plus 1 of k. This is the next step also in, um, implied that the right side of our expression advanced by one step also. So that's exactly what we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our conclusion. Um, since the statement, the statement is true for the base case n equals 1 and truth for an arbitrary n equals m imply that the next step that n equals m plus 1 is also true then this automatically means that the statement statement is true for all positive integers, for all positive integers, um, integers. Let's spell that properly. Okay, so that's basically that. Um, that concludes our proof, and then we can uh, put our box of accomplishment there. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. And do subscribe to our channel for updates to other great um, clips on induction such as this. Do post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on mark.serve.com under pre-calc. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.